how can we use this data and push back against the idea that we should defund a whole bunch of things that are teaching people some things they really need to know no matter what field they're in, while investing in the fields that are likely to produce returns for individuals? Do you understand my question? Yeah, I, on that one, the, uh, the, the intellectual answer is easy, and that is that general skills have value. It's why, in the end, people who get, as in our other data in the majors, uh, people get liberal arts degrees, don't make that much money with liberal arts degrees. They don't do badly. They end up sort of fourth out of, from the bottom out of 15 major categories. But 41% of them go to graduate school. And um, those who go to graduate school get a hefty bump. So in a lot of w ways, at least it feels that way to me at Georgetown, uh, the BA is prep school. So the, uh, or summer camp is one of the officials there in college. <laughs> tell you which one. The, uh, uh, so so about I, if for me, this I come at this from another direction. I'm the mayor, uh, the county exec, the, the governor, or uh, even the president, if you want to play heady games. Um, I got a certain amount of money. I got a recession. Um, four years cost more than two, cost a lot more than one for a certificate program. Uh, I put the money in the certificate program. Uh, and I know that the people who go to the four-year program, I can get a lot of them to come from somewhere else, uh, hopefully out of my jurisdiction. Uh, it, and there's that, it depends on where your school is. You can play that game, uh, University of New Hampshire. So, you know, I think you then uh, say to yourself, okay, uh, that argues for the certificate. Uh, what else have I got going here? I meet with the private sector. There's, let's say it's a big meeting, a Chamber of Commerce meeting. There's 150 people in the room. What do they want? Most of them from me uh, want people in local labor markets. Because if they really want an engineer, and not many of them do, uh, the engineer can come from three states or ten states away. That's a national or regional labor market. What I want from the governor is to be sure that I get my technicians, my local labor force. Uh, that means I put the money into certificates and AAs. But Tony, uh, aren't those pe same people arguing and, and complaining that when they get those people, they're not, they don't have those other skills that you get in those other fields? I mean, we keep hearing from the engineering people. I mean, literally, I was in a focus group with someone who hired a lot of engineers in Northern Virginia who said to me, they've got great engineering skills, but they can't function in and they can't work with people who are different than themselves. They can't communicate to save their lives. And he ended by saying, could you please teach the engineers to write too? But I can't teach the engineers to write if I don't have those other classes. You know what I mean? But in the case of engineers, again, where those skills, and those skills are necessary for technicians too, uh, Almost, I don't know the number precisely, but what we find is, in, it's, it's in the uh, majors data too, in all the STEM fields, uh, any technical field, at about eight, 85, the pe most of the people in them move into management, which is one of the reasons you get shortages in STEM. You just can't count the engineers because half of them are now management. Now, they're managing in technical companies or doing sales in technical companies. Uh, in which you need to be an engineer to make the sale because you're making the sale to an en another engineer. And if you don't know engineering and you're in a meeting in the company, uh, you're not going to have any legitimacy. So uh, the, uh, the truth is they really want people who can move into management, sales, and other functions. They're making a, a – uh, and they want that down the line as well. So they're making a demand for much higher skills uh, than they did before. On the other hand – that's not what gets discussed in the budget. So, you know, they, there's a conflict there between what the business community wants and will pay for uh, and what the governor's budget or the county budget will allow. I mean, I think that's going on all over the country. Let's and it ends up with arguments that say there are too many BAs. That one comes up all the time now. So Let's take another one or two questions. I saw another one right here. Yes. I have a question. Um, I keep blocking from the chief. And Maybe it's not relevant to this newest report, but some of your older, uh, your data from last year. Something I've always wondered about looking at the breakout of the earnings and education is whether there's 
what the impact of age has on that and whether um, some of these numbers are sort of overestimated because there's a, a number of people who are baby boomers who are grandfathered in essentially, who have lower education but are at a higher wage because they've made management from being in a company for 30, 40 years, but it's really a different situation for who's coming through our system now. And so if there's any data around that, anybody else, you know, whether you ever looked at it. In every occupation, uh, the older people have more education in the aggregate, but when you look by occupation, that is, the increase in education by occupation has occurred in always in the younger cohorts, right? What used to require uh, work experience and an AA is now a BA or a master's or something. So yes, the older people make more money with less education. Um, so that brings, that brings down the value of education. Uh, at the same time, the younger people make more money with more education. I mean, there's a balancing act there. And as we do oftentimes when, we, when we're asked that question, we control for age. If you control for age, you'll lose that effect, which is in a sort of way, I'm not sure you want to control for age. But no, that's not something that, it, the other thing that we do is we assume in all our data that everybody um, uh, in the system, unless they get a positive earnings return above cost, in our numbers on how much education is required, we throw away everything where there is no earnings return. We don't just take everybody who's got a high school degree or a college degree and is a bartender, they get dumped. So uh, there's an issue there about whether they stayed a bartender forever. In this game, in this uh, argument, at least now, and it's for a long time, it's good to be conservative with the education numbers, I think, because you can get, you know, get yourself in a bind. Let's take one or two others before we go to our, our panel. Any, any other questions or comments? Yeah, yeah. Rich Nodeff from AGB. Is, is the, uh, a lot of talk recently about apprenticeships, that we don't have enough industry-based learning opportunities for, for workers. Are they in your numbers in any way, or do you have any opinion about that in terms of increasing the number of apprenticeships to jumpstart the economy, or is that? They're, no, I'm thinking of the numbers here. They're in some of these numbers and not others because they're in these numbers as training. Um, but in general, my reaction to that is that apprenticeship's a very good idea, and anybody who's taken the trip to Germany comes back convinced of that, uh, but it doesn't happen here. And my bias would be, after many years, is that it can't happen here. And, and the reason why is? Because any, uh, we, are, we are fine tracking uh, before college, uh, tracking in high school abhorrent. And even though we're tracking anyway, implicitly, there's a difference between when it's government policy and when it just happens. There is a difference there. So you can't get anybody to lead a fight on career and technical education in high school because it's tracking. So we move towards uh, experience, uh, you know, work experience-based programs. But that leaves 37, 40 percent of the kids behind because they don't make it to college. If they go, they don't succeed. We have no alternative system like the Europeans do. Tony, I've heard you speak previously, though, about our inability to capture certifications as one element of, of the labor market. Do you want to touch on that briefly? We, uh, one of the, the, one of the uh, Martha knows this since for a few years now, that we've all been chasing data on certification certificates uh, because suddenly they became very relevant. They became, va they are valuable. That's one of the reasons. And uh, post-secondary education has admitted a larger array of legitimate uh, awards. In fact, probably going to get a bunch of new ones that are also legitimate, I think, if they drive earnings. Um, the, uh, we know, I'm trying to remember this precisely, but we find that industry-based certifications, certification uh, has a test attached to it. That's the difference between a certification and a certificate. And the test generally has to meet uh, testing standards, fairly high testing standards. When you discover and you go look at these things, they actually do. Uh, they're good. Uh, you figure out the reason is because the employers are serious about them. So they're not playing. They want people who can actually do this thing, use their machines, install their machines, or there are reasons, or there are regulatory reasons why people actually have to have the skill. They look to be, to us, about the same size as certificates, which was surprising to us. We find that out by looking at um, 
job openings data. It's one of the only ways we can find certificates. We look at all the job ads uh, and say, who's asking for certificates? How many are there? And they look like they're the same size as certification. We just say they're big. So in the American system, one way to talk about this is what happened. Instead of building a working class education system, the private sector, because it's not going to train people, it created certificates. I'm not training people to be qualified for work. The private sector trains people a lot to upgrade them, but not to qualify them. They want them to come qualified. So what they do is they've built this certificate system. And in a lot of ways, that's a very American response to what a, the Germans would have a meeting, a lot of meetings and <laughs> votes and all sorts of things. But in the American case, it'll be done with numbers, standards, uh, where people don't uh, so much have power over other people. And I think it is the American version of that that's slowly evolving. The big question is, will the government ever pay for certifications? I think if they bring earnings returns, the government should.